but but we had gotten to the place we said okay right and um and we were man i don't know why that just hit me um we were we were in my apartment and and she started to unbutton and she had this look on her face i said what 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 um she said i just i just always thought i'd wait and i said button your shirt back up and we and we went and we went in man i don't you okay? Yeah, that's good. This, this is gonna bless um, somebody. This is gonna bless and we somebody. We went into the living room, and and I said, "Listen, okay, here, here's what's gotta happen. You, you know that pink sweater you got? You can't wear that around me no more." Mm. See now, I remember that. Yeah. I said, "You know, you know them them Jordan's jeans. You can't wear that when we go out by ourselves anymore." We put porn to shame. <laughs> The womb isn't just about where I give Talk birth to about babies. It. Talk. The womb is about where we give birth to perfect. Talk. I was basically all of her nevers. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. You have set a standard in love. I was dating a young lady who helped me heal. Wow. This woman is a ride or die. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. I had 19 attorneys at one time that were speaking into my ear. 19, 19 attorneys. Attorney. My, my, my last relationship, you know, it did a number on me. What you did not know is I had a whole little situation lined up that evening. Your transparency is literally setting people free. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You can make me cry. <laughs> Um, thank you. I received that. Let one of them Barbie doll bodies walk away. He gonna say, Dear future wifey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're gonna go right in that box. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latarius R. Whitfield. Listen. Are you still shacking up with us? This is season five. Now, you have no excuse. If you're still shacking up with us, can we finally make a commitment? Listen, we're two years into this thing. Come on, hit that subscription button and subscribe. Man, today's episode, I'm really looking forward to it. Why? It's because I love sitting at the feet of wisdom. This brother jumped on a live a couple of months ago with Bashe and Jay. It was our two year anniversary live and he started dropping all these gems. And I said, you know what? I got to get more of this. I love sitting at the feet of wisdom. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My new homie, Pastor Cal Copeland and his lovely wife, Elise. How y'all doing? Good, doing good. So we want to call you. I know that when we started off, we had a little debate about what to call you. Should I call you Pastor Cal or what? What should I call you? My mama named me Calvin. You can call me Calvin. Okay, call that's you Calvin. All, that's all it takes. All right, so I'm gonna call you Calvin, and I'm. Do I call you Elise or Miss Elise? Elise is fine. Elise. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna call you Elise. So, um, you know why I got you here, right? I think so. Why do you think I asked you to come on the podcast? On the live, I said I got to have you on here. Why do you think? Uh, because I got a. A lot of talking to do. Uh, <laughs> I, I looked at that live recording and I didn't realize that I was on that thing for like 15 minutes. I was I like, we might as well do the episode right here. <laughs> so I said, let's go and have you. And then I knew that a brother, you spoke so well of your wife that I said, I want to see this woman that you're speaking so highly Ain't she of. fine? Ain't she fine? She, she cute. She got a nice Ooh, little shoes on looking yes, all Lord. youthful and fly. Yes, That's Lord. what I'm talking about. Look Ooh, at you. Yes, Lord. So we're going to call this episode Fairy Tale Love. We're going to call it fairy tale love because, brother, you did something that was amazing to me. You said, I ain't going to tell your story. When did you know this woman was your wife? Uh, I was 12 years old. Hold on, hold on. See, that's going to shock everybody. You was 12 <laughs> years old and you knew this woman was your wife. Yes, sir. How was that? She, she walked into church with her mom and her two sisters. I elbowed my brother and I said, that's the one. He, that's the one. He said, the one what? <laughs> I said, that's the one I'm going to marry. Um, now, I'm 57 years old, so so I know how crazy it sounds. But I also know that my 12-year-old self was never more serious. Really? I, I still to this day know that. That you were serious at 12? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, this, okay. <laughs> okay, at least I got I got to bounce that off you. When did he tell you that, though? Did he tell you that at a young age, like, hey, you, you gonna be my wife? Or he just said, hey, I want you to be my girlfriend, circle yes or no? Well, he didn't <laughs> tell me that until after we, I think we started dating. Because if I would have heard that, I would have looked at him like, 
okay, he's kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. I'd be like, okay, this it. guy's kind of weird. So, but I don't think you told me that until we actually started dating. At oh. what age was that? We Well, we actually started dating when we were the end of our junior year mm-hmm. in, high in high school. Because I really was really mean towards him. <laughs> you was mean? I was mean. At least you was I mean. Didn't... You seem so nice. Come what on. you doing being mean to old Calvin over here? Get, get her. Get her. Yeah. Get her, man. No, get I mean, her. at 12 years old, I was, I, I mean... It was there was no interest, and so but my family kind of kept encouraging him, saying, "Hang in there." <laughs> yeah, you, heard, you heard that? And yeah, yeah, your family, your family, you said you her, nicer. Her family yeah. was, encouraging. was encouraging me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to make that so camera. Uh, so, what do you remember her family saying to you? So, was that around your? You say you around your junior year? Yeah. Well, well, you know, twelve years old. I don't know that I said anything to anybody, um, kind of thing, and I'm sure that it probably just looked like you know, puppy love kind yeah. of thing. Um, uh, but around 14, I started feeling like, you know what, I, I really, but I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> um, uh, but but um, I think a couple of times I asked her for a number and she'd say no. And uh, I remember this one particular time I was in the basement of the church and her mama comes up to me and goes, baby, it's, it's going to be okay. <laughs> 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 and so and so I didn't realize that I had me a whole cheerleading squad at her house uh helping me out uh kind of thing but uh, she was she was she she if you was going to get to her you 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 was going you going to earn it so answer this what did you have interest of somebody else around that age uh oh uh oh well, no no it's just that at that time I was just about school I School was my thing in regards to because I was in the drill team. I didn't have time for that. That's so you weren't the young girls that was focused. You weren't one of those girls that was boy crazy and nothing no, like that. You said that's... I'm in these books. Yeah, yeah. But your family is interesting because most of the times families and I'm hearing y'all were raised in the church and all that. Most of the time the family would be trying to not allow you to date, but they're encouraging him. Well, no, because he was a. They they knew him. They saw he he was a nice guy, and so they saw that in him, and so. They just tried to encourage him, but I was telling you, I was a mean. I was mean. She, she was mean. I was mean. She was mean. So when did it change? What 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 shifted? <laughs> For me, I it, I think it's because I I matured, and then his persistence. Now she ain't tough. She, you know, it's them Lee jeans I had. <laughs> <laughs> them Lee jeans, boy. <laughs> them Lee jeans. So yeah. 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 <laughs> Go ahead, tell it, tell it. Well, those two, you did look good in your jeans. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, y'all. It's been a while. But uh. <laughs> so, around what age group was that? I mean, what, was that your junior year when y'all actually started dating? Yeah. Summer, summer before our senior year, we started dating. The the actual date. I know you don't remember that. that, that he remembers. Calvin, that. you don't remember the date you started dating this girl. I know. June the fifth, nineteen eighty two. We had just come from seeing Rocky three. <laughs> Come on now, right, listen, y'all. Y'all can check that date. That that was that was the weekend that Rocky Three came out. You can check that date. Wow. And so you said what to her? You remember what you said to her? Now this is where it gets a little funny because now, now you got to remember, twelve years old, right? You told your brother, right? That's the one. F- Fourteen, I start to have some epiphanies, but but I finally get to the place where she's giving me her number. And we have we have talked on the phone a couple of times, and the only reason I joined the choir because she was in the choir. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell the truth, huh? You know, listen. Um, so I joined I joined the choir, and uh, and uh, after choir rehearsal, um, you know, usually this is the funny part. Usually her mom and her they jet they out, right? But this time mom stayed back, so I got a chance to walk her to her mom's car, and uh, she's a little salty. She's a little. I was like, what's, what's wrong? And she, you know, now this after four years of her. Yeah, just, just right? not curbing you. So now she's, like, now she's like, where, where, where this relationship going? I said, where's it going? I said, well, let's go to the movies and uh, we'll talk when about it. see Rocket 3. And so we went to the movies and um, it, 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 we were sitting in the movies waiting for the movie to start and one of her classmates walked in with somebody and she said, She's with him. And I said, what's the matter? He don't look good enough? 
And she said, looks ain't everything. And look, Terrence, I said, so, so do I got everything, man? Mm. She said, yeah. I said, man, with this movie, man, I can't wait. I, Are you going to try to flip? You just, you just act like it didn't sink in. Right. And she, but you want to cry in that moment. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, right. See? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, man. You, you. Come I'm gonna on, man. I'm going to keep it real quick. I'm so, going to keep it so, 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 so she got mad. Woo, she was fired up because she opened the door. Yeah. And, and you, I just, act like, you just, you just I like, like, like anyway, yeah, this is cool. But but I was watching the movie the whole time going, she said, I got it. She said, I got it. She I said, got I got everything. everything. <laughs> I got everything. <laughs> Lord, Jesus. And so uh, after the movies, I asked her if she'd be my girlfriend. She said, yeah. And uh, what did that feel like? For me? Yeah, for you. You've been sitting there at 12 um, years old. This is, this is a step closer to the manifestation of that which you saw at 12 years old. Well, and, and it's funny because, you know, at 14 years old, I remember being in church one day and the preacher started the sermon by saying that, that half of the people that get married get divorced. Mm-hmm. Then he said, it doesn't matter if you get saved or not. Mm-hmm. And I remember at 14, I got mad. I was like, well, what am I doing up in here if you're having the same success? What the? So, so at 14, I started looking in the Bible because I wanted to know what the Bible said about marriage. Mm. And at 14, the only thing that I could find that the Bible said about marriage is you get married so you can have legal sex, guilt-free sex. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. That's, yes, that's, the that's, that, that's, all I, that's all I saw. Better to marry than to burn. So now watch this though. But, but I saw that and I liked that. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't mind. But but then I thought this. I said, man, there's a lot of girls that I wouldn't mind having sex with. Right. If I be honest, at 14 Fact. years old. Of course. But then I said this, but I don't want to marry none of them. Mm, that's deep. And so and so they were something different, right? So so he said this thing about divorce. I said, well, let me see what the Bible says about divorce. So you find in Malachi where he says he hates divorce. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But then I found in Matthew where the religious leaders was trying to trick Jesus. And Jesus responded by saying this, Moses allowed divorce because of hardening of heart. But from the beginning, it was never supposed to be that way. Right. Now, now did I, did I go write in some notebook, those scriptures? And my, no. But at my 30th wedding anniversary, when people started asking me about it, I realized that I started making decisions based on that scripture. At 14. At, four, at 14. What I heard at 14, it set in me because what I realized that if, if hard hearts cause divorce, then healed hearts must be those other marriages that are working. Teach. Not, not, but once again, 14, I didn't know that. No, I didn't know I was saying, no. I didn't know I was thinking that. 16, I didn't know I was thinking that. 30 years of marriage, I didn't know I was doing that. You were just married and just doing but, the right thing. But when people started asking me, how do you do this? How Y'all not just married. Y'all look like y'all like each other. Like y'all still look like y'all. And, 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 and we literally got into an argument a couple years ago because when I got married, I said, I'm going to stay on my honeymoon. Right? Mm-hmm. And so a couple years ago, she said, come on, we ain't, I ain't on no honeymoon. I was like, I'm, I'm on the honeymoon. She said, we got kids and a mortgage. And I said, listen, I'm on the honeymoon. And so she almost talked me out of it. <laughs> she, she, she almost. Wait, well, because you wanted to name. Stop the, the microphone closer to your mouth, please. The honeymoon phase. That's what you, I said in reality, it's, to me, it's not a honeymoon because you have life. Not responsibilities. Saying that it, uh, responsibilities. And it, it, it's not bad. We had a good times, bad times, but it's not a honeymoon as you're not saying la la land, but everything's before the, the real deal hits. That's my opinion. Right. <laughs> but so now you, 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 you I, I, I kind of conceded. I said, okay, we ain't going to call it honeymoon phase, but what are we going to do? She was, I see you. She done forgot already. It's been <laughs> two years. But we talked about how, how we're going to not allow anything to stop us from making each other priority. priority. Okay. That's it there. Mm-hmm. Hold on. You got to say that one more time. Go ahead, Elise. To make each other priority. That's the key. Why is that important, Elise? It's important because if I know that I'm his priority and he vice versa, there's no way that anything else can get in the way. Facts. So. What made you come to that revelation? In terms of making each other priority? Yes. Well, because once again, um, 
seven years of dating, right? Um, that that developed in me um, discipline because because uh, it, it ain't easy being no teenage boy. It it ain't it ain't easy. It ain't it ain't easy being no grown man. It ain't, <laughs> exactly. It ain't it ain't easy. Um, I'm the youngest of six boys, mm-hmm. and um, my 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 father was 42 years old when I was born. Wow. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I turned 16, my my routine was on Saturday morning. I would go get my brother Eric's car, and I would go to the joint. Uh, to pick up my father. Okay, let me, the joint. My my daddy played cards um, all night long. And so and so I would go to pick him up from the joint and I would take him to breakfast in hopes that he had had a good night. Mm-hmm. Want some money. Because if, if he had a good night, then he slipped me some money and then my weekend is good with a leaf. Yeah. But we go, we go to our favorite soul food breakfast restaurant in, 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 in Buffalo. And it was Gigi's. It was, oh, y'all, y'all from Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, and and we would go now. So now I'm 16 years old. He's 42, 52, plus six, 58. Yeah. Now he's 58 years old. He's divorced from my mom. Um, and all of my life, I've known this. My four older brothers got the shock of their life, but all of my life, I've known that my daddy had a whole nother family on the other side of town. You always knew that. Because I was so young. Because by the time I'm five years old, he's now 47, and now the, the secret is out. Oh, okay. Right? But yeah. my four older brothers, they don't their they memory the is, they, yeah. yeah, but my, but, the, but in their their growing up days, you know, dad dad was, mom and dad were nuclear family. They didn't know. Yeah. And so, and so the way they found out, one of my sisters knocked on the door one day and said, can we speak to Roland? And my brother Eric went to go get my brother Roland. <laughs> and my brother came to the door and said, yeah. And she said, are you named after your daddy? Hmm. Roland, Roland said, yeah. He said, well, I'm, she said, well, I'm here to see my father. Mm-hmm. So, so, so that's how they found out. So it, 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 it did some things, mm-hmm. right? But for me, it was all I ever knew, right? So here was the blessing. I, I'm at breakfast with my dad, who is now 57. No. 58. 58. He's 58. And I'm not talking to dad. I'm talking to Roland. Yeah. And, and he is talking from his place of regret. He's talking. He... he <laughs> You know, you know, every now and again you have some colorful stories that probably I shouldn't have heard at sixteen years old. Mm-hmm. But but there were other days that he would talk about, man, if I had just done better with your mother. You know, he even got crazy one day and said, Man, do you think she'd take me back? I said, But Nick, you are you is you okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but now, but now, but now I wanna emphasize, sixteen years old, I wasn't I wasn't taking notes at those at those breakfasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just listen. I was like, dude, did you did you can you slip me a hundred did you get yeah. did you so I wasn't I wasn't it wasn't registering with me. Um but but once again, thirty years later, I'm trying to explain to people how Elise and I are the way we are, and I'm realizing how much of an impact Seeing him had on me. Fumbled the ball. Right. You fumbled it and you decide to say, all right. And in your subconscious, you said, I'm going to be better. I'm going to do better without even acknowledging what you had seen. Well, yeah. And, it, and, it, and, and you know, I, I did acknowledge to this point, like, um, I acknowledge that I wasn't going to sleep with just anybody. And, and that was hard. Uh, it was it was hard. Um, um, can I say it one more time? So you talk, talk. It was it, hard. It was hard. <laughs> um, um, but I, the other father in my life was actually her father, and so uh, he, he he he. At the time, we he wasn't a real talkative man. He didn't, you know. He was he was one of the fathers that when you when you walked on his driveway you knew it was his driveway he he was he was he 
King of his castle. Look here, and 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 if you didn't know it, you about to know it. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's one thing that I knew about him. Every day at six o'clock, I knew exactly where he was. He was sitting at his kitchen table with his family eating dinner. That's beautiful. Now, I don't know what they talked about. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't. You know, I don't know intimately how their relationship was. I don't. I don't know none of that stuff. But I know that in the forty years, and it's still going on to this day, that I have known him. If I ever want to reach him, I call him at six o'clock. So you've seen, you're stuck in this juxtaposition of two different worlds. Mm -hmm. I see this world where, unfortunately, my my father fumbled the ball uh, in our family. And then I see my wife's father, like, you know, I was about to say Cosby show, but that may trigger people. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you see what you see on TV. You see this TV show love where people are actually sitting at the table, breaking bread together. Yeah. Uh, what did that do for you as a man? Uh, once again, I don't know that I was consciously thinking about it, um, but but it made me underst- or understand, believe, I don't know if, which word it is, but it made me realize it was possible. Yes, that's, the, that's, that's um, what I want to get at. And, and, um, and it was normal. Like, like it was normal. Now, now once again, my mom, she raised six boys. Yes, she did. Uh, none of us went to jail. She actually has less grandchildren than she has children. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, I want that to sink in yeah. for a minute. Yeah, that's like this. She has less grandchildren than she has children. Why is that? Um, is well, everybody married? Uh, three of us are married. One died. Um, and two are divorced. Um, I'm just trying to think of the grandkids. How many of them there? Yeah, there's 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 uh, Addison, Junior, right? Then there's Erica and Aaron. Then there's Alan right. and Alexis. You're right. So it's four of them. Wow. That is true. Well, actually, she has the same number. Cause Addison, <laughs> Addison got another daughter in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 yeah, but, but, but why is that you asked? Um, it, my, you know, my mom was, was, was the kind of mom that you would often hear about in terms of black families. Now, um, I'm a pastor. I'm one of three of the boys who are in ministry. Wow. Um, but, but, but I'm also, uh, and I think I shared this a little bit on the live, um, I don't like to play church. Uh, and so, uh, I want, I want whatever I believe about the word of God to challenge me. I think too often people challenge the word and they don't allow the word to challenge them. Teach. Um, and so, and once again, I think because I was so young, um, you know, 12 years old, I'm in church. 14 years old, I'm starting to ask these questions. Um, and, you know, and I didn't always see that in the people in the pews. Right. Uh, and I don't, I don't, it was a grace. I don't, I don't know why other people's um, uh, hypocrisy, I don't, I don't know why it didn't hit me that much. I, I know it did cause me to leave the church for a while. Let me ask you this, because you drove a point home. You said it several times, and I think men need to hear this. Mm-hmm. You said you just didn't want to have sex with just anybody. Yeah. Why did you say that so many times? Because it was hard. And and um um but but I also know this that once again, as I look back, it was a thing that strengthened my relationship vertically with God, and it was a thing that strengthened my relationship with my wife. But was that something that you saw? Like, like, did you? Was there some model, some man modeling, not sleeping around with different women? No. Listen. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. I got. I got. I got. I got five brothers. Yeah. Right? Um. My dad was one of thirteen kids, and six of them were boys. <laughs> the uncle that I'm named after, Uncle Cubby, is, is, is we used to call him Uncle Cubby. When we go to his house, his coffee table was a stack of Playboy books. Yeah. Yeah. 
and so part of part of what happened with me being the youngest of six boys with a father who had a huge family um i hope this doesn't sound crazy but like pornography and it didn't like i didn't have to like i hey oh um, can i let yeah, me is that right in front of your face and so it didn't um i looked but it, it didn't grab a hold of me. And I think part of the reason it didn't grab a hold of me um, is because I had in my sight something that was real. Hold on. I need you. I need you. People that may, people may miss that. <laughs> Pornography is a fantasy. And mm-hmm. we talked, we, 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 uh, they mentioned that at the Hill, uh, Jess Hill bro yeah. uh, thing that we went to yeah, last, and, night. Uh, last night. And in that, they unpack how pornography affects men. That's a right. lot of times women don't believe that pornography does anything for that's men. Right. What, break that down for the brother and the sister that's struggling with pornography. What does pornography do to the male psyche? It, set, it sets unrealistic goals, straight straight up. It, um, um, it, it, it will have you believing that you're supposed to perform in kind of things that, but but more importantly, it, 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 it Attaches um, your your soul from from your body, and let, let me see if I can say it this way. I, I I this is why I always I always teach it, and 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 I had to teach it to five year olds. It was my first assignment when I taught. I said I was called to ministry. I had to do a Sunday school class, teach on the Trinity. Um, um, but 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 I would tell them this. I'd say I am a spirit. I live in a body. I possess a soul. And my soul is made up of my mind, my will, and my emotions. I am a spirit. I possess a body. I mean, I live, live in, a in a body. body. I possess a soul. My mind, will, will, and my emotions. And so um, my, my body, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. How old am I now? 47. 57, dude. 57. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say 47. You could have gave me Hold on, 10 I'm years. I'm 44. Years. I said you're three years yeah. older than me. <laughs> but but my 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 body wanted things, right? Yeah. That that the Playboy books and all that kind of stuff could have satisfied. Um, um, but it really couldn't satisfy. Right? It could have made me numb. Now, once again, I got brothers and I got uncles that I'm watching. I'm going, okay, <laughs> okay, um. Uh, so can I let me go to one more quick Bible deal, uh, and, and I and, and no, I think I, I said this. No, I, I think I said no. this on the left. No, you you, you derailed because you're about to oh, unpack go ahead. something. Go ahead. What from a soul standpoint and the body standpoint mm-hmm. detaches a man from a soul level when there's pornography involved? Be, because because when there's pornography and 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 I and I am dealing with an image that's on a piece of paper or on a screen, then it becomes about me. Um, and, and, you know, it, it, it's like, they talk about, they talk about how drug addicts, their first hit, yep. they spend the rest of their life trying to get to that same hit, right. uh, kind of thing. And, um, uh, that, the pornography, it could never get the right hit and, and, and you get detached. But now watch this. My body just keeps wanting it. I'll even go this far and say, my body keeps needing it. Yeah. Like, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to talk. Talk. So, so, you want so, to say so, part, so, say part, so part of what, part of what the blessing was was this, you know, Lisa and I saved, trying to do right, trying to live right. I went through a season where we were dating and I was low key trying to figure out how to get there to my apartment. Uh, yeah. Amen. Right, I'm talking to her. You know, I love you. You love me. We love each other. You, you listen, right? And so, you know, by this time, she ain't been quite so mean. She, she telling me she loved me back, right? So, so she and she, she, she'll say she doesn't remember this, but, but we had gotten to the place. We said okay, right? And, um, and we were. Man, I don't know why that just hit me. Um, we we were in my apartment, and and she started to unbutton, and she had this look on her face. I said, "What? What? What?" Um, she said, "I just I just always thought I'd wait." And I said, "Button your shirt back up." 
and we and we went and we went in man, I don't know what you okay. Yeah, that's good. This, this is gonna bless um, somebody. This is gonna bless and somebody. We went into the living room and and I said, Listen, okay, here, here's what's gotta happen. You, you know that pink sweater you got? You can't wear that around me no more. Mm. See now I remember that. Yeah. I said, you know, you know them them Jordan's jeans? You can't wear that when we go out by ourselves anymore. Right? And so like she would she would touch me every now and again. And I said, you can't touch me there. And so and so it took her a minute to realize what I was what was going on. Yeah. But what happened was is it is it it developed a, a level of intimacy for us to the place that to this day she knows what kind of women I like. That's she, good. she knows what kind of women I'm attracted to. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's true. Now, now we talk about help me. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm in love now, right? I ain't, I'm good. And she said, Calvin, no, stay away from that one. Mm. I said, girl, you don't, come on. Yeah. girl ain't thinking nothing about me. She ain't been wrong yet, Lateria. That's good. So, so she and I hadn't been a few years. Yeah. So I said, baby, what you, what you, what you think about? She go, she, that one okay. I said, okay. Um, and That's so, good. yeah. And so, but. Well, it's powerful as a man that you allow her to be your accountability partner. Yeah. Because most men, because I, I used to do that in my marriage all the time. I used to be like, girl, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. No, 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 no. And just deflect, deflect, and then I'm having an affair. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then one day I had to, I wrote down on a piece of paper and gave it to my wife, all the women that I had an affair with. Oh, Lord. And I wrote it down. I said, this person, it was just oral sex. This person just did this. I wrote it down and gave it to her. It was the hardest thing for me to do. It's mm-hmm. like giving her everything and then for her to weaponize it against me. And she didn't. And she looked at that and she said, I already knew some of these people you you, yeah. you would. Yeah. Because she knew the type of character that the, the, those women had. Yeah. She knew what type of character I lacked. Yeah. So she just said, it's a perfect yeah. storm for something to happen because yeah. I'm watching this type of woman. That's yeah. the type of woman that would sleep with you. Yeah. And then I'm going, huh. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, huh. but yeah. the fact that now going back around the, the second time around, my wife will have the full authority to check me like that yeah. and be like, no. Nah. But to be transparent enough, like you were, to, for her to know you well enough to be like, yeah, that's your type right there. Now, see, the transparency, yeah. I, the, 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 uh, uh, Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. Um, and I just, remember I told you, I think in the, in the live when I called in, that this thing has been, been wrestling with me for the last three years. And I saw something for the first time where, where you know, the first thing that God said about man was that it's not good for them to be alone. That's what he said. Right? Then you get to the place that he says they were naked, naked and unashamed. unashamed. Right? Then it says that the serpent who was the wise or most cunning out of all of them, right? The way I like to say that is, is that the enemy had a plan. But now here's the thing. When he spoke to the woman, he said this. He said, now... Um, you will have a desire to rule over your husband, but he will lord it over you. Now, a couple of things. One. Unpack this. First, first of all, God wanted to have relationship with us. Remember, he said in the cool of the day, mm-hmm. he came down to talk as was his custom. Yep. And so with that one plan that the enemy had, he separated us from God and he separated us from each other. And as a result of that separation, the Lord said, because of the mistake you made, y'all going to be at odds with each other. Yep. Now, now, but, he, but, but, but here's the thing. You know, you know, and I heard this for the first time. Is the scriptures talk about says how Adam said, but this woman you gave me. Yep. But wait, but wait. What did God say that the woman was? Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. And so he listened to his flesh. Uh, see. That's good right See, there. see if 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 we as men would learn how to stop listening to our flesh. And I'm 57 years old and it's still trying to talk to me. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. see, it 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 never ends. No, 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 no. It never ends until the day your spirit leaves your flesh. So we talk about this love that's a fairy tale. Yeah. Um, part of the thing that allows it to stay fairy tale ish 
is that I know that there is a possibility that she could wake up tomorrow morning and say, I'm done. Really? You still believe that? Well, well be, be, because the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked and no man knows what it's capable of. Whew, see, that's the part. See, that's the part that makes people uncomfortable about marriage now, <laughs> because it's saying that, hey, I've gotten to this. I, I got this revelation. I feel the way I feel. I I've, I've saw that this was the woman for me yeah. at the age of 12. She yeah. was going to be my wife. I protected her when my, my loins was burning yeah. and I told her put her clothes on. Then I fireproofed our relationship by saying, hey, don't wear these Jordache jeans. Don't wear that pink sweater. Yeah, don't yeah. touch my knee like that. Yeah. I did all that. Then we stayed married for 33 years and it could be a day that you wake up and say, huh, I'm done. Yeah, it, 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 be, be, and and be, because because as as well as I've done in some areas of my- The other areas you failed. Some other, I, I, I have hurt her heart. Let's talk about that at least. He said it's been areas that he's hurt your heart and he believes that there's moments, that's because scripturally, that's sound doctrine. Um, you could wake up one day and say, you know what, I'm gonna go do this on my own. Have you ever been at that place where you want to walk away? Oh yeah, there's been times. And what made you stay? My relationship with the Lord. So your relationship with my God. relationship with the Lord is it's because I, I don't want to hurt him, God. And because I don't want to hurt him. God. I'm going to keep fighting. He's my priority. So what do you think about women nowadays who say, you know, I can do battle by myself. I ain't going to be sitting in no, no, no relationship if mm -hmm. I'm not being served, whatever that is. I'm not going to get into details about what made you decide to walk away uh, in those moments. But what do you say about that when women say, you know, women are the leading the they're leading the cause of divorce by the ones that's actually filing. So women are the ones that's filing for divorce. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's the tune of like 85% of marriages are ended by women. Um, but here you are saying a, as a woman saying that, yeah, I've been hurt before I've gone through whatever we went through. And he's saying, yeah, I ain't been always right. And you say, yeah, but I'm gonna stay here for the Lord. Stay here for the Lord. But he, 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 he gave me Calvin. And because the healing part, because there's some women, they haven't found one that's going to be working to heal their hurt places. We've discovered that, and we're going to continue to do to constantly work on healing each other in our hurt places. Teach. It, and, and I want to emphasize that this revelation just came to us. What? Three? A, three? a, a year ago? Three yeah, years yeah. ago? She, she said it like this when, when we did our podcast, and we were talking about you know, um, healing each other's heart. She said, Calvin, I always wanted to work at marriage, but I don't know that I was ever thinking about healing your heart. That's what I'm saying right there. Right. Yep. And, and, and so then do you want to talk about like, why, why is that significant relative to our growth as a relationship? Good. Well, for, for, well, for me, it, it's, I think it would have been easier if we if we had a, gotten this earlier in our marriage. That's why I started my podcast. <laughs> yep, yep. Because then, then I would because of things that we've gone through, I wouldn't keep bringing them up. Because there was a hurt place in regards to why he was doing what he was doing. Right. And so hurt place in me and you. Yeah. Right. And so if we were truly knowing that the purpose is to heal each other, yes, I think it would have been more easier yeah hopefully that's making sense it's making a whole yeah, lot of be, sense be, because because one of the things she said was this she said she said when i was doing it because i love the lord low-key i was judging you in some places yep yep low low, low key i was like well he should have done better and why did he do that and how did he get us into this place and huh right but now but now once again i want to show you the grace of god um during 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 the national uh foreclosure epidemic mm. we we were one in the number me too right and miles was 2010 and so and so um we had to move out and 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 then within two weeks of getting that notice uh it's crazy stuff going on my job i got fired from my job mm. right and 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 i'm sitting there and that's when we start talking about divorce and i literally said i said listen 
I ain't gonna like it, but I understand. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause, you know, this is what the, it is, the right failure there. that you feel, right? Now, 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 later we come to find out the mortgage company had done some illegal stuff. We got a little bit of money back, but that didn't help us at all on the day we had to move out. No, sure don't. So, so, so we done moved out, moved in with my mama, living in this room about the size of your <laughs> studio with my daughter. And she grabs my hand one day and she says, she said, just, just help me, help me see. I can't help me see. And Latarius, I thought, you still believe that I can lead you? You, 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 you still? And man, that was all I needed to then go to God, cause I didn't, I didn't know. That I, I didn't, I didn't know, and so the Lord, the Lord started instructing me to do things, and so I'm a, I'm a chaplain. I'm a life coach, I'm a pastor, and I'm a facilitator. And at that time, I was doing voluntary facilitation for nonprofits to build up my resume for facilitation. So I did this one facilitation. They called me back the next day. They said, uh, Calvin, I said, yeah. He said, we really appreciate what you did. I said, thank you. He said, listen, we want to we wanna offer you something. I mm. said, what's that? He said, would you, would you plan this youth conference that you just helped us facilitate. It was a collaboration of all these different organizations. And I said, uh, I said, sure. She says, listen, we, it's got a couple of problems. I said, well, what's, what, what? So we have done nothing to plan for it. <laughs> it's gotta be delivered within the next, I think it was 60 days, yeah. no more than 90 days. Um, she said, but the good news is you have an enormous budget to use. <laughs> He's like, that's all I need to hear. Let's work. And then she said this. She said, and in fact, you have to use all of the budget because it was a grant. Yep. Yeah. And she said, and she said, if you will take on this task, whatever you don't have to use in expenses, you, you get to keep. Yep. I said, yes, law. Yes, yes, law. <laughs> yes, law. Um, and so and so the Lord opened that door. Um, and we were able to do the conference. And it was is 18 months later. We were in our house. 18 months. Now, 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 you know, they say seven years. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. For seven, 18 months later. Elise, <laughs> Queen, in that moment when you were living in that, that one room with your husband and your child, mm. what did you think of your husband in that moment? Oh, please be kind. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, why and how could you? I mean, I, I, it was bad. I, I thought bad. I'm like, why did he put us in this place? But then I had to say, okay, come on. I'm part of that too. It's not just him. So, um, why you say you were part of that? Because that's, that's, that's some be, be, introspective be, stuff. Because. We were, it's as one. Talk about it. Um, e even though uh, he, he was the one that was paying the bills, or, but still, I, I have to put myself in that. It's, it's not just one person in regards to, to that. Because biblically, you're the helpmate. So, so that was the key. I said, but, but I'm going to say this, though. But it was rough. I'm not going to be. Yeah. So what made you say this? What made you say, help me to see? Because I saw the hurt place in him and I wasn't going to, to, we were both hurting together, but I mean, it crushed him, especially to have a child and you're in your room with your mom. Now, 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 now this, this is another one. Um, it was Saturday morning. I was, I was at a minister's meeting and, and she got a knock on the door. They gave her the notice and I come home. And uh, we're in the bedroom and crying and, you know. So the Alexis comes in. What's wrong? And Elise ain't saying nothing to her. And I said, baby, we're we going to have to move. She said, where are we, where we moving? I said, we're going to have moving with Granny. Then she said, we, we going together? 
Mm. Mm. I said, I said, yeah. Mm-hmm. She looked at us for a minute and she started walking away. That's all she needed to hear. I said, I said, where you, I said, where you going? going she said, I'm going to pack. Yeah. Sure did. <laughs> and I thought, out of the mouth of babes. No, I thought, God, how did you what? Mm-hmm. How did I deserve that? Yeah. yeah. But um it 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 showed me once again, she ain't gonna like this, how you can stay on your honeymoon even in the bad times. Yeah. When 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 you let nothing come asunder. There it is. When 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 you know no you know in in sickness and health ritual and so and so once again i think the other piece was this 7 years of courting i had made enough deposits to be able to withdraw no no but now watch this i didn't think i had made enough no, deposits no you didn't cuz at that point no 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 let me ask you this real quick cuz i want to talk about this before we wrap up 7 years what made it take so long for you to marry her? Well, I know I wanted to finish college first, so that that was the reason why. And and then and then the other thing that that I you always said you go seven years from from sixteen. Yeah, from six, we got married at twenty four. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Well, that that yeah, don't, right. don't count. But 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 it, but <laughs> yeah. it really does kind of yeah. it really kind of does, does it does, but not in the sense of where we always say a man because you you still fit the mode of a man knows within six months whether or not he's going to marry somebody. Heck, you knew before you even <laughs> said she had you at hello, she had you at walk by. Yeah. So, so she didn't even Listen, speak to you. It was, it, was, it was a purple terry cloth dress. He, he, he remember what, what the here, woman had look on. He, look here, bro. But um, <laughs> he uh, a purple terry yeah, cloth yeah, dress. Yeah, yes, Lord. Her, her <laughs> sisters had the same dress on in different colors. I don't remember what colors days was. I don't know what colors they were. Um, uh, <laughs> At least what you think of it. <laughs> that is crazy. Ain't it? How do you just remember that stuff? I don't. Yeah, he's this memory. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> So you still fit the mold uh, within six months, and you dated her for seven years, but yeah. it was literally it, it, but y'all then, young. But the other dynamic was is I wasn't just marrying her. Talk. I was marrying her family too, and so Teach. and so the family dynamics of how that had to fit in in terms of when we got married, and I still was a little bit faster than he wanted than Dad wanted. What did um, Dad want you to wait too? Uh, he he said, "Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me a couple more years." <laughs> I said, I said, I said, look here. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Now, now, now uh, uh, fast forward to my wedding. I'll tell you this quick story. I don't know how much longer time we got. But but the two men that have affected my life the most came to me on my wedding day. And my dad kind of reiterated what he said to me at breakfast. Um, man, if I had done it like you did it, I'd probably still be your mom. But but my father-in-law comes to me. He says, he says Calvin, I need you to know I'm proud of you. And I said, thanks, Mr. Montgomery. He says, no, 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 you don't understand. You, you've you really done this family well. Mm. I said, I, man, I really appreciate that, Mr. Montgomery. He said, listen, you can call me dad now. Latarius, I said, thanks, Mr. Montgomery. It took me about a month to get out of it. Um, but but once again, it spoke volumes to me. Now, that day I knew. That yeah. that day, I, it, it, it really said something yeah. to me. Um, but but you ask why do we wait to seven years? Um, be, because of the family dynamics. You don't when you get married. I, she she married me and all my five brothers and mm-hmm. my crazy uncles and mm-hmm. she. I married her and her mom and her sisters and her dad. So so so, the the part of the blessing in that long courtship is is before I could articulate it, I knew about her family dynamic. Because I spent enough time with her. Right. Um, she knew about mine because we talked about it enough, and she could see. It was funny. My my mom got remarried, and, and my my stepdad was an alcoholic. He was a working alcoholic. Like he'd go to work. Yeah. Right? And we went to a picnic one day, and uh, Elise came to the picnic, and uh, and I went to go do something, and Eric come, my brother Eric come running. He said, "Calvin, Calvin." I said, "What?" He said, "Elise is talking to Palmer." I was like, "Okay, okay." Oh, okay. He drunk. I said, okay, we, <laughs> you know, but, you know, and so, and so, you know, we spent that time when we got a chance to know each other's family. And so, you know, our decisions were, were around and still to this day, 
um, you know, our families affect and influence our decisions. So, uh, Elise, why did you accept his proposal? That's a good question. I'm, it, it may be, I just knew that he was the one because of the way he courted me, his persistence. My family loved him. I knew he loved the Lord, which is very important, even though he said he did join the choir just because, but, but <laughs> I knew that Calvin, he loves the Lord. And so that was key for me. I love him, Joe Dash Jeans, too. Oh, right? Calvin. <laughs> listen, because, 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 because the, you know, Listen, listen, I, I love the Lord. I really do love the Amen, Lord. Amen, but talk about I, it. I love the Lord, um, but, but, I, but I am a man who is still striving. Um, I, don't, I don't want that ever get lost. <laughs> and, and, and the reason why, and, and, and the yeah. reason why is because, because so many people will look at our relationship. And just think it's all perfect, no temptation, no struggle, yeah. no nothing. You know, and so when we tell people, yeah, we, we've talked about divorce. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, us. Um, uh, and so, and so, once again, how love can last forever is is you make sure you understand that it could be taken from you at any moment. So, Elise, do you think you'll ever walk away from him? Nope. Do you think you'll ever walk away from her? Man, she couldn't get me to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen. Nope. Listen, um, uh, I, uh, I told you a little bit about my podcast. I want to tell you just this one quick story. Um, a couple that we that I interviewed, um, she, she is a model. At one point, she was an Ebony Fashion Fair model. He is a retired defensive end for the New England Patriots. Um, but, but she was, she went to the same high school I went to. She was a freshman when I was a senior. Uh, let me fast forward to the end of it. Um, during the podcast, she, she, she acknowledges that she had a crush on me in high school. She said that while y'all was doing in the, in the podcast. <laughs> because, because one of the questions I asked is what, what relationships influence you before you, the one you're married? That's like, a good question. Wanted to know, That's good. like, how do you see what happened? Jay says something. I can't remember. I, ideation? Did he? Yeah. He was talking about ideation. I, I but, 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 um, I want to. I want to try to unpack, like, what's your view on relationships? What's affecting your like, decision on who you're choosing? And so yeah. Jackie, Jackie said, interesting enough, you guys. And I was like, and she said, you know, I had a crush on you, Calvin. She said, but I knew right away you had this girlfriend. And and now, now I lived in the suburbs. She lived in the cities. So we they we, we didn't have cell phones and stuff like that. So yeah. So Y'all they see never each other at saw church. right. Yeah. But my it. but my school never saw her. Yeah. Right. And her school never saw me. And it was so funny. She just told me today, yesterday, that that both of our schools didn't believe that we existed. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. So, but she said she said this. She said, she said, but but I watched the way that you would, um, be honorable. To this, she's a, she to this mysterious girlfriend in her absence, right? She said, but it let me know that that it was possible, right? And I told her things, and then I told her this. I said, part of the reason why you knew Elise existed is because I would say that to keep me accountable. See, because as soon as I said it to you, now 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 it's out there. Um, but then I told her this. I said, I said you do understand, because as they told their story some really great stuff came out. Um, and, and I said, you do realize that your story is going to be a miracle to somebody else. Yes. And she said, what do you mean? I said, the Bible says that miracles were, perfor- were performed so that you would believe. So, so now watch, I'm trying to live right, but to you it's a miracle because I'm, I'm, I'm being this honorable man and it ignited your hope that it's possible. Yep. But it was me just trying to live right. But for you, it was a miracle. Yeah. And I said, so when people hear your story and you begin to speak to situations in their life, yeah. it'll be a miracle to them. Facts. Now, uh, um, uh, Latarius, that that's one of the things that, that I admire about you is, is, is uh, the fact that um, 
and I'm sure you've heard this before, but this podcast is a miracle. It it is it has transformed people's lives. And it reminded me of a training that I had in in in, in chaplaincy. Um chaplaincy, we had to do this exercise where um we had to knock on a door and tell a family that family member, a family that their family member mm-hmm. died. Right. And and um so when everybody did the exercise, everybody used Every word except for dead. They expired. They, you know, mm-hmm. right? And so the counselor came up and the teacher instructor came up and she said, she says, you have to use the word dead. And like all of us were cringing, like, man, I'm gonna knock on the door and tell them that they did. And 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 she said, You have to use that word because when you use that word, it's it final. begins the healing. Yeah, it becomes final. But it begins the healing. Yep. And I said, I said, you just freed me. You you just freed me to be able to use that word knowing that the Lord was going to use it to bring life. And I say this to you, um, the pre- transparency that you have done in front of the world um, it th- that's why the healing is taking place. And so um uh, you know, I I I I watched your episode. She just got finished watching Essa Zakin's episode, and she goes, "Oh, Alexis needs to see this." We say, "Yeah," but you know, I you know, I went back and I watched some of your other stuff. Um, what the Lord is doing in you, and and it's because you have been transparent. Church, church folks can't take what you say. No, nah, like the average person can't. And that's what has been such a blessing is because God has been, it's caused a, a ripple effect across the world. Uh, and I'll be honest with you. Like when I first started doing that, I was like, well, this I'll start this off in the beginning of the, of, of the podcast, quote unquote, career uh, back in 2020. I said, I can't do another episode unless I first reveal uh, about my adulterous lifestyle that I lived when, when I was married. And I was like, well, end of this thing, well, career suicide for this. Because at that point, I only had like 500 subscribers, majority women, and that's going to be triggering for a lot of women. That, oh, here go another dude. I don't want to hear nothing he has to say. And then before I released it, I sent it to my ex-wife and I said, I know you never wanted me to talk about this while we were married. And I said, but I want to you know, give you the honor to watch it before I release it and, and for you to bless it. And she watched it and she said, and this is what I love most about you. She said, because you will own your mistakes. You won't, you'll, you'll, and you didn't pass it off on me and say, well, if she would have did this, I wouldn't have cheated. If she would have did this. And I just said, I cheated because I had a lack of integrity and I owned it. And she said, that's what I love about you is when you exist in your God space. Dude, let me tell you something. Do you, do you know that you just articulated what submission is? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Submission is the greatest gift that God has given us. And you just articulated to your ex-wife. Yes. Yes. And so and so that's why the acceleration of your healing is taking place. Right. If you'll allow me. Go ahead. Go in. Go in in while we um, wrap up. Uh But you you need to understand that when you get married the next time, you'll just be getting started. That your healing, see, healing never ends. Never ends. Facts. My favorite verse, Hebrews 11.39. H- Hebrews 11th chapter is the, is the pillar of faith. Faith is some things over heaven's not seen. But in 39 it says, and all of these people died not receiving their promise. So what makes me in the hall of fame of faith is the fact that I keep on looking for transformation. One more last one and I'll be done because I'm going to start preaching. I'm, I'm going to stop. I feel but, you but, going. but Jesus was talking to the seven disciples, left disciples, and, and, and Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Go down to the end of that 25th verse. And it says, on that day, Jesus did more miracles than could be numerated. On that day, he did more healing to them seven fellas than he could write in a book. 
And so part of the way love can last forever is you understand where is my next healing coming from? Mm. But, but I can't do that if I'm not going to be transparent. Yes. Not, I can't do that if I'm not going to be real. I can't, I can't, I can't get to that healing if, if I'm not going to be real about the deal. So now I get my vertical healing, right? And that's what God does to me, right? His omni, he, he, you know, omni, all of this. But then there are the, the things that God does through me. Yep. That's why we need helpmates. There it is. And helpmate isn't about gender roles. If you fall into them gender roles, great. But but Elise is Calvin's helpmate. Calvin is Elise's helpmate. Facts. Whoever your helpmate is will be your helpmate that you can be open and transparent with. Can share anything with. Now watch this. 33 years married, 40 years together. There's still stuff we can't tell each other. Really? He- healing, healing. I just did finish doing this series on this. Healing requires three components. Truth, time, and grace. Mm. And that's the part that stops people from being transparent is the grace. I, they, it, they'll say, well, if I share this with you, and I know we've known each other for some time, but if I share this with you, then will you actually cover me? Or will you actually be able to say, you know what, I'm not going to judge you by your worst mistake. And not a mistake in the past, but a mistake that you made presently. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to say a mistake, a bad choice that you made mm-hmm. presently. I don't think I have a grace to, I don't have the grace to to cover that. Mm-hmm. And and the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. Mm-hmm. And so when you get to that, that beautiful place of love and, and, and y'all are intentional with each other and not gaslighting each other, lying and doing all the stuff, being manipulative, literally trying to serve each other. Mm-hmm. Then when you have a mishap or make a bad choice, then the person truly sees what you've invested throughout the years and say, all right, this is an isolated situation, not a, a character flaw, but this is an isolated situation that I can let my love cover. Uh, Elise, would you like to say anything before we wrap up? Um, just like Calvin says, it's you're always going to be healing and allow the Lord to continue to work and thank all I can say is thank you so y'all have a dope podcast that y'all have together what's the name of that podcast how love can last forever after all and how, where can people uh, listen to this podcast uh, go to uh, pastorkylegope.com okay um, on YouTube and, and website I'm going to drop a link to the website uh, in the description. I mean, I'm going to drop the website in the description, and I'm going to drop a link. Why well, just put the, the website link right mm-hmm. so it show everything? So I drop a link to the website in the description. Go show them some love. Go support it. Go subscribe. Uh, comment. Let them know that, hey, I'm here from Dear Future Wifey, and uh, show them some love. Man, listen, it's been an honor to talk to y'all. Man, I just I just love it. 33 years in the game. Yes, sir. And so that's very encouraging to me. Uh, it's powerful. Numbers are very significant to me. You said that y'all actually unpacked and understood what, what your marriage re- truly meant at 30. That's when Jesus Christ started his ministry at 30. Then at 33, that's when Jesus Christ uh, ascended. Uh, so now I just speak blessings as y'all ascend to a new height, a new level in Christ, a new level in your marriage, a new dynamic in your marriage. And I, I speak that it causes a ripple effect with everybody that's under the sound of your voice, that when they tune into your podcast or people that you meet on the street, people that y'all pour into, that they see that it's possible. They see that it's possible to love on these levels. They see that it's possible to serve on this level and they see that it's possible to have grace on this level and so i just want to encourage y'all and speak blessings over y'all life listen y'all give it up for the coaches ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015 my nephew black a boy the likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship slim to none armani 16 years old black a boy With five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name, the likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? 
wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Latarius R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. You have no idea how much I enjoy talking to the Copelands. I love sitting at the, the feet of wisdom. People who have tried and true their relationship and their marriage. I just, I love it. I love it. So when he was on my live, I said, I definitely had to talk to him because he was so, so dope. And to meet his wife, she's absolutely amazing. Has this nice regal, uh, regalness about herself. Really, really like her. Um, so here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, I'm often questioned by curious social media followers and friends why I haven't found you yet. I wonder if I've met you and the Lord has you hidden in plain sight. Am I still waiting on the optical prescription from my Heavenly Father to see you? Are my eyes still damaged from unhealthy interactions from women in the past that's preventing me from seeing you? Is the God I sing withholding nothing to, withholding you from me? One thing I know for sure is that the culture offers many distractions. Through the power of social media, I have the rare ability to entertain women at the click of a finger. I pray this accessibility doesn't lead to indecisiveness or analysis paralysis. Maybe I should challenge God and create a code word that you'll say that will identify you as the one. Hmm. Maybe. 
your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.